So thank you everyone for coming. And we have now our professional <laughs> keynote, um, Alpha Female. And Jazzy, I'm just gonna throw it open to you because I think Dan was already giving you a pretty good introduction. <laughs> Yeah, hi everybody. My name is Jazzy Gabbard. I'm a pro wrestler, MMA fighter, actress, and soon to be a promoter. Um, I'm currently in Germany. Um, my native language is also German. So please excuse me if my English is not perfect. And I hope you will understand everything uh, in the last couple of years. No one really um, complains. <laughs> um, someone is calling me, of course, just now. Um, so yeah, today um, the subject I got is perseverance, and I have to tell you honestly, I have to practice this word a lot. So I'm going to um, use the words um, stamina or patience or uh, you know willpower, if you don't mind. <laughs> um, I want to start from the very beginning. So a lot of people know what I've done with wrestling, but not so many people know what I've done before. I'm going to tell you uh, out of inspiration. So it's going to be a little bit sad. And if you feel uncomfortable or something, um, please, I don't know, mood me or something. So, okay, I was born 82 in Germany uh, and I was found in front of a church actually so I don't know my real parents and I was brought to a foster care and uh, I lived there for a couple of years. Um, I do not have good memories there and I think one of my first traumas started there and then I came when I was six years old into a family who had three boys and I was like the most looking forward girl they really wanted to have. But unfortunately, um, I was not the girl they dreamed of. I was not doing ballet. I was not dancing. I was not wearing like dresses and everything. And I had to actually fight with my brothers all the time because they were also really jealous. So, and then a few years later, they started again to have, you know, their own child and Avila, they had a little girl. So I was kind of, pushed to the side again you know like my first parents who knows why they did that they brought me away and now this happened so it was not really a good start I didn't have a lot of confidence in my life and when I go to school I was always the outsider kid I was like super shy and yeah all that and then we moved like I was born in East Germany I also have to say um it's a big part of my life um and when the wall opened in 89. Um, my father uh, lost his job and we had to move. So we moved like really far away. We moved to Bavaria. And then while we were moving, I found a wrestling book. That's how it all started. Um, I was 10 years old to that time. And again, as I just told you, my brothers hated me. I didn't really feel love and nobody really cared about me. My parents were fighting all the time, you know, and there was a divorce going on. And then I found this magic wrestling book. I still have it here. Um, and I saw these characters. It was like Hulk Hogan, the Macho Man Warrior. They were all so bright and they were all so strong and they were full of confidence. And I lost myself, like little tiny Jazzy. She was so tiny. She was so insecure. She was so, you know, broken. She fell in love with all these fantasy world. Um, I want to shorten it a little bit. Um, my parents divorced and the girls, so my little sister and my mom, we moved back to Berlin. And I was 16 at that time. And unfortunately, because again, I didn't have a lot of confidence and I didn't really know a lot about the world because no one really teached me, you know, I didn't really, you know, had a lot of um, attention in school. So I was really clueless. <laughs> and then something happened, like um, five people came and attacked me and they beat me really badly down. I was bleeding and crying and it was really hard, right? And then I went home to my mom and she was kind of shocked and she couldn't handle the situation and she threw me out. So I was homeless. So I'm telling you all of this, not that you feel any pity for me or that you feel like, you know, like, oh, poor girl. I want to tell you this out of inspiration. It's super important for me that you know my backstory because now the amazing part starts. So for some reason, 
you know, I lost really everything. I even lost the will to live. I tried suicide sometimes, you know, like I think I tried like three times, but thank God it didn't really work out. I even ended up in a, a, you know, institution and they helped me a little bit to gain back my life. They helped me to get my first apartment. And while I was like wandering down the streets, I found wrestling again, like a little flyer fall in my hand. And it was the German Wrestling Federation, which is located in Berlin, Germany. Um, I didn't even know like to be quite honest I didn't know that there's wrestling in Germany or in Europe I only knew about you know the American wrestling and I decided to go there so little jazzy and I have to explain you like now I'm like big and strong and confident right but back in the days now I'm like 18 I was of course 180 <laughs> tall but I was like 60 kilo like I'm like 30 kilos less than now I didn't have any tattoos and I was pale I had like these long black hairs and I I was kind of Michael Jackson kind of you know to imagine um and so I walk into this wrestling right like I open the door and I see so many fans I see these wrestlers of course they weren't as awesome as the American people like on TV but still it was pretty cool and I saw two girls wrestling there, Plunikita and Vesna. Some of you maybe know them. And I was so fascinated. I mean, no way in the, you know, like there was no way that I ever can be a wrestler. Like I was way too weak and everything. But I said, I have nothing to lose. And that's like, for real, like I had nothing to lose. So I went to the wrestling school and I said, hey, I'm Jazzy and I wanna join. And they're like, no way, no, no, you're weak. Like, no, we don't want you. And we don't even like female wrestling, you know, because back in the days, and we talk about um, the 2000s, there weren't much wrestling around. Um, Lunikita and Vesna, they, they had to work really hard to be even there in the school. And they had to, you know, they always had to double the work of the boys, you know. And then there was me and I'm like, please, I really want to join. They said, no, no way. So three months, like actually three months, I'm going there and I'm like, I want to be a wrestler. I go to the school. I said, I want to wrestle. And they're like, no, no. So I follow really stalker. <laughs> I follow the trainer to their home and I ring at their home. Like, I really want to be a wrestler. So they said, OK, you know what? Let's give it a try. Dude, they beat me up in wrestling school every day. You know, like I was I was hurting. I was like black eye and ugh, it was insane. And after a while, they said, Jesse, you're not leaving, aren't you? I'm like, no, I, I love wrestling. And then, then, <laughs> something that you don't like, but I really, I believe wrestling is real. And when they told me wrestling is not real, I didn't understand. I'm like, but it hurts. I have to train so hard. Like, what is not real, you know? And then they explained me, um, you know, some storyline stuff. And I was first thinking, no, no, they're kidding me. Like, <laughs> I mean, they beat me up so hard. Like, how can it not be real? Um, and then I had my first match and um, I was not the alpha female back then. I was Jazzy B. Jazzy B was a stripper from Hamburg. That was not my idea. <laughs> that was my trainer's idea. And that was how the time was back there. You know, females were only there for eye candies, you know, sex cells. And I hated it. I hated it so much. But that was my only choice. I had to do what the trainers say, right? So I had my first match. I'm going in, you know, like I'm dancing. I'm doing the pole dance on the ring. <laughs> and I see people cheering for me. That was the first time in my life that I got love, you know. And I was like, this is amazing. Um, there's not much to remember about my first match because I got like a chair shot. Then later I woke up and I got another chair shot. Someone won. I think it wasn't me, <laughs> but it was amazing, you know, and then we're going back to perseverance. You know, I kept going. The training was so hard and I, believe me, um, wanted to quit many, many times. Um, but back in the days, we didn't have Twitter, or Facebook or, you know, the Internet. <laughs> and it was not really easy to connect with other people. So I really had to do go through all of this by myself. 
and I had a radio. Yeah, we had radio back in the days. And I always listening to it. And they're always, when I had like really, like I had to walk home because I couldn't afford the ticket for the train. So I had to walk one hour back home from the gym. Again, I was like beaten up. I was like hurting. And then the sound in my ear was like, if you really want to, you know, like Bob Marley and like these songs, like don't give up. And I didn't give up. And fast forward, um, I um, go, I went to uh, London, to the UK, because in the UK, in Europe, it's like the hotspot for wrestling, you know, like you can do it everywhere in Europe, but if you really want to make it, you go to the UK. And there was Dan Reed. He gave me actually a chance <laughs> um, to perform. And when I wrestled for Dan Reed, I was already the alpha female. Like I changed my gimmick because I didn't want it to be, uh, you know, like portrayed as a sexy wrestler. I wanted to be a strong wrestler. I wanted, you know, to make a difference. Um, actually, um, I need to tell you how it came that my name became the alpha female. So I was on tour with some superstars like Bret Hart, Sabu, um, Rob Van Dam, Sandman was on that tour, Chris Masters, like a lot of big names, right? And I was like always looking up to them. And then I had a talk with Bret Hart and I was asking him, how do I can become a better wrestler and how do I can come up with a gimmick, you know? because a gimmick is really uh, important in that business. And he told me, which I always love to say, you know, in, in interviews or when young wrestlers ask me, I always um, repeat what he told me. So he said, you can either take your own character that you have and volume up 10 times. So for example, you're a funny person, volume it up, and then you're like a super funny person in the wrestling ring. Uh, well, I was lame, so that was not a good idea. <laughs> so, and then he has said, and the other thing is what you can do, you can be the person you want to see yourself in the ring. So if you want to see a strong, independent female, then portray that in the ring. So I was like this little, tiny, not tan, like really pale, jazzy, and I'm like, yeah, like I want to see a strong woman in the ring, like, when I watched WWE, we saw like Sunny and Sable, they're all like tits out, you know? I mean, don't don't get me wrong, like I appreciate every little thing they did, but it was just nothing for me. Like this is not how I wanted to be when I grew up, you know? So yeah, I started uh, coming up with the character of a female. Um, of course, I needed to train a lot for that. Like I went to the gym and then the change started, like not just from the outside, but also from the inside. So deep inside, I always had like, you know, something like the, the, the willingness never give up, you know, and then like the, the, the lioness, you know, that wanted to fight. That was always inside of me, but I needed to bring it out. And with Alpha Female, I got the chance to do so. So yeah, and then Dan Reed, he gave me the platform and I'm really forever thankful for that, that he gave me uh, the opportunity to wrestle there. Um, and he actually invited Japanese pro wrestlers and with them some, you know, photographer or other promoters came and one talent scout came and he saw me and he actually gave my name to Japan and he told me, hey, when I was in, in the UK, when I was at Pro Wrestling Eve, I saw this unique tall women, like you need to bring it to Japan. And I have to say, I never wanted to go to Japan because I was so scared of it. I watched the documentary Gea Girls, G-E-A-E, -E, maybe you saw it before. I watched that and I was terrified. I was like, no way that I can go to Japan. They will, they will kill me. <laughs> and then uh, after 16 hour flight, um, they brought me direct to the training. And it is exactly what I saw in these videos. I saw Mayu Iwatani. She was sitting on someone and she's just beating her. Bam, bam, bam. And I'm like, 
dude, <laughs> I can't do this. And then they were asking me, hey, Jazzy, we were thought, thinking about it. Can you do a 30-minute fight? And in my head, I was screaming, no way. But of course, I said yes. <laughs> and it turned out it was really an um, amazing fight. I had a match against Nanae Takahashi back in the day. She was not beaten for two years. So it was a pretty big deal to go draw with her, you know. Um, <laughs> and then because we had it earlier, then we said she hates the word sport in wrestling. Um, actually, wrestling is a sport and <laughs> uh, that's why I call my company sports entertainment because you know like you have to be a sports person to just go through a match like even a 30 minute match you know um so go forward I kept on going I said okay I'm doing Japan it doesn't matter it will be hard but I keep on going I will have perseverance because <laughs> we have that um and then they asked me actually if i want to stay for a long time and my second match no my third match was a title match and i made history like this little jazzy who nobody really wanted who was adopted and living in a freaking foster care being homeless you know she wrote history i became the first um european champion um, from Japan, you know, like I became the first Japanese champion from Europe. Um, and that was that was a really big deal, you know. Um, but then again, my dream was always to go to WWE because that's what I knew from America. This is what I wanted to be, you know, and I wanted to be just a part of all that. I love show, you know, like I love wrestling and I love the, the, the sports effect of it. But I personally, I'm more like a show girl, you know, like I love to be a big girl and, you know, screaming around and, and doing these kind of matches. So then that's like another, um, another advice I want to give you so if someone says no to you do not accept it so because I went to um, WWE tryouts a couple of times 2010 2015 um, and I think I, one more time like I had three trials and always they said no to me and it's the same with TNA when I had a trial there the first thing they said was no you know but I, I didn't accept it I said one day you're going to call me, like that's for sure. So I didn't want to give up. So and then the rumor went around. So if you're over 30, that they don't want to hire you, especially women, because they're too old and they cannot learn anything new. So I was like, I'm going to show you that I can learn something new. And I started MMA. So I go, I like, I went back to Germany and I moved into a trailer in front of a gym and I trained for six weeks, the MMA. It was brutal. It was so hard. Like, it's insane. Like I had to train three times a day and I was, it's so much pain. But at the, six weeks later, uh, I went to the MMA and I won. Yay. <laughs> and it was so successful that Japan called me um, the big promotion Ryzen. And I had my second MMA fight in front of 22,000 people, you know. So that was so insane. And that's when WWE came, um, you know, on the radar again. And they liked what they saw, I think, and they invited me to be uh, on the May Young Classic in 2017. And I was, I was so excited. But I have to also tell you, I still didn't have like confidence. Like you won't believe it. Like if you watch my my pictures, like if you Google me or something, you will see always this strong, you know, woman. Like, but deep inside of me, I still didn't feel loved, I didn't feel accepted, I still didn't have confidence, right? And I can remember right before my my match at the May Young Classic with Abby Lee, I called one of my friends and I told him, there are so many amazing women here, like, ah, oh, I, I feel so small, like, what can I do? Like, how can I even survive? You know, like, I, I feel like a failure and I feel like I will do everything wrong. And he said, shut up, Jesse. <laughs> he said, listen to your heart like you always do and just do what you always do because you're amazing. And I trusted him and I went out there and it, it was great. Like, it, it was amazing. Like, the fans really loved it. Um, I went backstage, Shawn Michaels was there, he gave me a lot of praise and I was like, 
wow. <laughs> and then the next day, because I lost my match at the Mayan Classic, I thought I have an off day. You know, I just can walk around, support my girls, you know, like wish them good luck and, you know, help them wherever I can. Uh, and then Tessa Blanchard, she told me, hey, Jelly, what are you doing? You have a you have a match. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, we have a special six-man match. It's like a surprise match. And dude, it was a surprise. So four girls went already to the ring and now it's my entrance, right? And I remember I was backstage and I had like a little face-to-face -face with Triple H and my music hit and the people were screaming so loud, like, whoa. I look at them and we're like, whoa. <laughs> and then I went out there and I have to tell you, like my music had like three beats. So the first beat I come out, the second beat I lift my flag and the third beat I walk, right? I couldn't hear it because the people were so loud. They were like chanting my name. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is insane. So little tiny Jelly deep inside, she was like, this is the greatest thing ever. Like, you know, this is all that I wanted. Like since I'm 10 years old, I was dreaming to be in WWE and now I got it, you know? And <laughs> after the match, they were chanting my name. They say like, please sign Jazzy, please sign Jazzy. And I was so ashamed you know like i was like i don't deserve it i like i have tessa blanchett next to me and i had uh who was the other girl i think San no santana girl was the other one uh kaylee ray so kaylee ray and tessa blanchett like two amazing girls young girls upcoming stars right and they're chanting my name i are they serious you know um and that's like what i want to tell you you know like this journey it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And maybe the odds all against you. Maybe you do not have the shoes for running. Maybe you do not have socks. Man, running without socks really sucks. <laughs> so maybe everything is against you, you know, and you don't even want to start, but I'm begging you, please go to the start line and just run, you know, it, it will it will hurt, you know, and, and you will think, hey, that's not fair. This guy has the best shoes ever. And this guy just had like, you know, the super awesome energy drink and, and you're there with nothing. But you will surpass the others because this guy, he maybe meets the love of the life and then he's distracted and he will not start running to the goal. And then there's the other guy, you know, he feels life is unfair and he starts drinking and doing trucks. But you, you keep on focusing, right? And you're running and you're running. And at the end of the day, you maybe reach the finish line. You know what I mean? And if you, for example, if you stop wrestling, like if you stop, um, you know, doing and you give up, it will be like a cycle. Like you will go, give up everywhere. Like it's not just wrestling, but if you, when something comes in your way, if you give up easily, you will never reach anything. So look at my life, okay? That's why I told you the beginning of the story. Look at my life. If this little girl was absolutely nothing, like not even parents, like I'm alone in this freaking world. If I can do it, I believe in you that you can do it too. And I have to say, honestly, I thought that here's a lot of young people listening to me, but now you're like all my age. So what I want to tell you, um, maybe we'll hit the nail on the head. Um, so I'm begging you, raise healthy children, because it's much harder to fix broken adults. So that's what I want to say. And <laughs> one more thing, um, you know, like I have all the rights to be angry or, you know, drink and have alcohol problems, like have all these bad things, but I choose not to. Like I choose to be a champion you know and there are traits that cost no money you know you can be humble you can be nice you can help others and give back and all that will somehow bring you to whatever you want to right um my wrestling journey kind of ended because i'm feeling old and i i you know i i went to nxt uk so i actually got my dream come true. I signed a contract with WWE, but it wasn't the right thing for me. And I honestly have to say, maybe it was because I didn't believe in myself. So now after I finished NXT UK, there's so many more great projects. Right now I'm filming a movie and it's amazing. I get like, they love me, you know, and, and they treat me so good. And 
maybe that was always missing, you know, the self confidence, the self love and, and all these things you need to have to be successful. And I know it's hard out there and things are difficult right now but i believe if you go deep inside yourself like i did because there was nothing else i could do um then you will feel then you will understand that everything is inside you what you need to fulfill your dreams so yeah i talked a lot and i hope <laughs> you're still with me and i hope you enjoyed it and maybe you have some questions for me i'm really happy to answer them <laughs> that was wonderful i mean i'm my partner is sitting here too, and he was just commenting on how your story actually just sounds so similar to like our stories too. And it's like, it's wonderful that you have had such perseverance. You're, I think that you're a role model in, some, in that okay. regard. I'd love to hear how this, this idea of perseverance and, and what you've learned so far, it has influenced like your taking on these different hats, like being an actor and, and being a promoter. How do you see the lessons you've learned from being the wrestler applying to these other um, activities? Being a promoter, I came from because I went to many, many shows and many, many shows weren't right, you know, and I always thought I can do it better. <laughs> and because I don't want to just talk, I need to prove that I can do it better. I thought, okay, let, let's put your mind together. Let's think about what can you do better and I was so close like guys you cannot believe I was so close so my show was in April I think 29 wait I have to look over here when was it 19 it was April 19 and on April 19 they shut everything down so I couldn't even do my show I was like please give me one day <laughs> but they didn't give me one day um but yeah I have this great vision visions and I just want to show especially the people here in Germany, how to make a great show. You know, like, for example, when I see many different shows and I, I wrestled there and we had like 50 people or something, like 50 fans, right? But for my show, I already sold 400 tickets. I didn't even, you know what I mean? So I like, if you do it right, you can do it like, please do it right. Like, don't do wrestling shows because you love it. Like, think long term like you need to have safety for the wrestlers like have ambulance there have like you know in locker rooms like have girls locker rooms male locker rooms like have a safety environment you know like make sure that you can fix it and also with the money like oh, i hate how little money the wrestlers get you know so i wanted to make it a little bit right uh, just a little example uh, i wanted to book two referees of course not just one because i think one person should not do all the matches so i booked like two um and i asked him how much you want and he said 20 bucks i'm like what i'm not paying you 20 bucks and then he was like really shy Oh, I can rest, I, I can come for free. I'm like, dude, no. <laughs> and I offered him more money, you know, because I was so shocked that he asked on like a referee is doing like three or four matches. Like he should get more than 20 bucks, you know. <laughs> so I want to make this at least right, you know, and I want to give a little bit back, you know. I got so much love from this wrestling business. I could travel the world and and now I personally think it's my time to give it back. Like I want to book wrestlers from all over the places and you know give them a stage because some people like them Rick gave me the stage and I want to give that back. We also had some um, good questions in chat that are just wondering about you and, and your experience performing in, in the ring and so Lisa Jones wanted to know, like, who do you think your best match was with and who would you still love to wrestle? Like, is, are there any, you know, younger, interesting uh, wrestlers out there, male or female, that you would love to get in the ring with? Yeah, I mean, it's always unfair to say who was the best match with. I also don't like the question, who's the best wrestler, because you simply can't say it. Everyone has, like, different nuances, you know, so... Yeah, and everyone has different opinions. So, and I hate really to say who's my best match because there were so many amazing matches. But I would say, I would say top three. Okay, so definitely Abby Lee with the May Young Classic. Oh my God, I loved it so much. Then Nanae Takahashi because she challenged me so much. She broke my eardrum. I had concussion because of her, and I lost my front teeth because of her. But I still love that match. And I always love to fight against Kyrie Sane in Stardom. She was Kyrie Hojo because she's so little right and we could always say the story 
um, you know, small and big, but she understood wrestling. Like she's so smart, you have no idea. So she always asked me, please, can you beat me up? Like really brutally, can you be extra brutal to me? While other people always said, oh, please soft on me. But she understand as more beating she gets, as more the fans will love her afterwards and buy her merch. <laughs> Is there anyone still working that you'd love to wrestle ah. if you got back in the ring? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love to, um, there's this girl, Meat Mountain. Uh, I forget her name. That's, I think, her wrestling name, Meat Mountain. She's huge. She's as huge as me. She's big and she's brutal. She's, I love her. <laughs> yeah, I want to wrestle her. And my all-time dream, Maiku Satomura. I want to have my retirement match with her one day. So I hope I can do that. My She's as NXT UK now, so I'm not sure if it's possible. But I really want to wrestle her. And yeah, I mean... There's a lot of great talents out there. So yeah, the list can be endless, but these two for sure. And then we have a question from Rocky, who's who's interested in how you get into character. Like if, if you get into a character who's more of a face or more of a heel, like what's the diff, is there a different process for getting into character? What's that like? Yeah, so my character is a little bit different, right? Like difficult also, different and difficult. So I'm not like me, like, like, it feels like I become someone else, right? It feels like a demon takes over me. So I start, like, it's a whole journey. You know, I, 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 I take my gear on. I make, like, my hair. Usually, like, I'm blonde and I have, like, these back. So all these, there are, like, deep steps I need to take consciously, you know? So I take it on. And then I have, like, a, like a big bath rope. I put on my uh, chest and inhale so everything is free. And then I really become, like, a monster. And I think that's different between me and many other wrestlers. So I don't feel like... Like, I don't feel like I'm wrestling. I am the alpha female. You know, like, I'm not playing a role. That is, that's basically me. When I go out there, I don't think, oh, Jesse will do this or that. Like, no, I am the alpha female. And funny, um, maybe, um, when I go, for example, for uh, big castings, you know, like a movie I want to get, like the last movie I got, you know, like, I would dress up nicely. I'm Jesse, right? But then deep in my heart, like, I'm thinking, I am the alpha female, like I, I channel her, you know, so I'm getting more confident because, you know, no one can beat the alpha female, you know, <laughs> so that's quite funny, sometimes I get her out when I need her, someone like at the store when someone pushed me, for example, I'm like, what, what, what you want, huh? <laughs> we also had a question regarding um, looking at the the changes within women's wrestling even mm. within the past several years i mean what do you think has been the biggest change in women's wrestling since you really got started uh the biggest change is definitely that we get paid for our job you know before we always had to wrestle for free to just you know to back the promoters please can i be on your show and they're like yeah we're not paying you whatever um, but also, I remember one time um, I was in France um, for American Wrestling Rampage Tour and the announcer, he was like, that was actually with Jenny Sjordan and me, we were like backstage and the announcer were like, and ladies and gentlemen, now women's wrestling and the fans started chanting, we want boobies, we want boobies. And her and I, we looked at each other, we were like, not gonna get it. <laughs> and then we went out there. And we didn't even lock up. I mean, you guys know Jenny Stewart, and she's an amazing wrestler, right? She can wrestle. And we didn't even lock up, and they were chanting, you can't wrestle. That's not going to happen these days anymore, you know? And what I find quite interesting these days are more and more female ma female matches on the show. Like, back in the days, it was only one show, most of the time no shows. But this time, like, there are even two or three female matches, so that's pretty awesome. And also, what changed big time, which the people don't even, like, the young girls who are now in the wrestling scene, they don't even understand what we had to go through. Now there's like locker rooms for everyone, but back in the days we had to go outside or we had to ask the wrestlers, can you leave the room for a second that we can dress up, you know? So there wasn't even changing room for us females. So a lot of things change and it's changed for the better, but I think the young generation should not forget, you know, how it was and should not, you know, take it for granted. They should still, you know, fight for the rights for the females. 
What do you think about intergender wrestling? Because I know that at least in America with the, the televised shows, we there's like that idea that you're not allowed to show it because of the possibility of men following it and beating up women. So what do you think about like intergender wrestling and when you have those types of matches? Mm, I, I know that my opinion not many um, like like um, and, and appreciate, but I don't like female, like I don't like intergender wrestling. I had to do a lot because there weren't a lot of females I could wrestle, you know, um, but I don't like it. Like I think I, I don't think because it's not realistic, like that's not the case, but I just don't like it. Like it, it gives the wrong image. I mean, I know there's two athletes, uh, but you wouldn't have it in MMA, you know, and you wouldn't have it in other sports. Like why would you have it in wrestling? Um, I don't know. I just simply don't like it. I don't like to touch male. Like wrestling is really intimate, you know, like for example, when you take someone for the power bomb, like I don't like, you should not think this way, but it is what it is. And I don't want to have this genitals near my body you know when I wrestle and there's just sometimes I feel mm, how you say like I feel beneath you know because um the male is like standing over me and then maybe I'm near his genitals while you know selling and I just don't like the image like the image at all like and also like men beating women like it's wrong but it could also be the other side like I understand, like, even when the Me Too movement were, it was always the females talking about the boys, but there were actually some guys who contacted me and said, hey, Jazzy, some stupid shit happened to me when I was a trainee, you know, like, I had to touch the, the genitals of the male trainer, the boys told me, right? So it's not just the females that have this kind of problem, like, yeah, so, yeah, I don't like it, <laughs> sorry. No, that, and that's fine because it actually then segues to the to the question of of speaking out because speaking out last summer was in some ways connected then to that me too movement so mm -hmm. do you think we'll see lasting change in how professional wrestling handles these types of issues about not even just intergender wrestling but how to um, promote and and deal with increasing presence of women in, in professional wrestling i i really hope so that there are some regulations like uh, i don't know how it is in america but here in germany everyone can open up a wrestling school and it should be not allowed like i think there needs to be a regulation that um maybe like uh like in school you have like a trust teacher right that you have something like this like one or two person like a group going around these wrestling schools in germany or europe even or around the world and actually give the people a chance like look at me like i mean it's so long time ago and I didn't speak out because I thought the time was passed. But me too, I got also touched uh, on places I didn't want it to be touched, you know, doing training and, and things happened that I didn't like. And I had nobody to talk to. I mean, these days we have the internet and it's so powerful, but it's good, but it's also bad. Like I know the predators, for example, can say to you, hey, if you talk, I will talk to all the promoters that they never book you again. So you know, it's it's so hard and I understand the pressure because they told me the same. They said, if you say anything, you will never be booked. And then maybe can confirm like when he, like people told him about me that I'm a really mean person, that I'm arrogant and that I'm in trouble and then all that. And because I spoke up, you know, I, I didn't accept it, um, some things and it went bad for me. Like I had for a long time, a really bad reputation and that's need to change like somehow we need like a trust worker who goes to different schools uh, and speak trustworthy to these people like boys and girls you know um and then they can say what's going on um but yeah also like a regulation that not everyone can be a trainer like you need to look at the criminal records what's going on you know um and yeah it's it needs to be Sub supervisions or something that word is right um they should be like in boxing you know like that they get licensed um and and also the wrestlers you know not everyone should step in the ring um back in the days uh, i can remember it was actually with becky lynch she fought against a, a girl and she said yeah yeah i can do this i can do this but it was a lie she couldn't and that's why becky lynch got hurt and she had to pause her career right and we need to really take care of that not everybody can step in the ring like you need to have at least 
some kind of, you know, like say 50 hours of pro wrestling training, you know, with professional trainers, then you're allowed to go in the ring. And it's the same with trainees, you know, like, yeah, there needs to be definitely some work to do. I don't think that just because we spoke a little bit about it, that it's all done now, because it's the most of the time, like there's some in fair note, there's like some shitstorm in the internet, but then all is forgotten. And I see already that few wrestlers try to go back into the scene, you know, they're not they're still there, you know, even they did all these horrible things. They always say, yeah, but it's not proven. But yeah, who to believe, you know? So it, it's very difficult. And that's why I think we need, before it happens, we need to work on it, that it's not even going to happen, you know? Yeah, I know um, Tony Khan of AEW has been on the record saying he plans to never allow Joey Ryan to be on his roster. And, For example. Hmm. Yeah. So do you think that, I know, I know you said that you've seen some changes, but do you think that we've seen enough change in the fans and how the fans respond to women's wrestling? Or do you think that there's something more that might need to happen there to help women's wrestling um, get even more of a push? I mean, we have to be realistic. Not everyone's cup of tea is to, to watch women's wrestling, right? Um, I mean, I see it, for example, with Dan Rachel. He has all female shows. So you will see a lot of people who love females, but they maybe necessarily don't like male wrestling, you know? So I think we maybe should a little bit divide it, you know? Like, for example, I love big man wrestling and I do not like too many small man wrestling, but I accept it. And I think that's what we to do we need to accept each other um but we should also not press stuff on someone for example i read that someone don't like um comedy wrestling here i saw before so if he don't want to see comedy wrestling he should not go to a regular show and only watch comedy wrestling there i can understand why he's get mad and i think it's the same with female wrestling there are some people out there and it is what it is they just don't like female wrestlers um then we should not push too much wrestling on and female wrestling on and so maybe you should really divide it like have all female wrestling shows like why not why can WWE not do another brand and have just female wrestling you know I personally would love to watch that you know it's the same with NXT UK not everybody like British style wrestling not everyone like Japanese wrestling not everyone like American wrestling so everyone needs to have their little thing they can watch you know and I wish desperately that there will be more female wrestling on TV, not just on demand, like that I can need to search for it, but also like I turn on the TV and then yay, wrestling, you know, I would love to have that. So I hope that's going to change for the future. So as you've had all these experiences now from wrestling and now going into promoting too, this is kind of a very standard question, but I think you would be a really good person to ask this to. What would you say then to a young girl, think 10 years old, they found wrestling for the first time, maybe they stumbled across a, a jazzy match on YouTube or something. What would you say to them if they were interested in getting into the business? Don't do it. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you know what? These days it's so difficult with the social media. Uh, I mean, I have um, a lot of small kids around me here and I see how much pressure it is, not just, of course, wrestling, but like in general, like some of these kids have TikTok and they try to have fun, but then they got mocked in school and social media or like the internet they don't forget. Like if you post something out there, it will be there forever and maybe you will be embarrassed. So it's difficult, right? So, but my advice for young kids, I would say, do not go on the internet. Don't put anything out there, like absolutely nothing. Don't even send pictures to your friends because you never know. Maybe one day they're not your friends anymore. Um, and try to get as much basics as you can, you know, go to uh, aerobic class, learn aerobic, learn to do like the backflip and all that because it seems that wrestling is going in this kind of direction that more and more flips going to happen. I don't, like, I hope, but I don't see it that it's coming back to selling. I think um, that the selling is really important. That I actually learned at the um, acting class I did the other day. Um, she said, the words are words, you know, but it's more important what's happening 
between these words, you know, like uh, the movement, the face, the eyes, you know, everything. Like you can even say something without speaking. And it's the same with wrestling. You can make a match without doing all these moves, you know, like what happened between the moves is super important. Uh, like the other day was on Twitter or something about the German suplex. Someone didn't like that someone gets up so quickly, right? And I totally agree. German suplex sucks. Like it hurts like hell. Like why would you go up straight after? Like take your time, you know? And I think also take your time as a teenage girl. Like when you're 10 years old, I would say don't rush it. Um, don't make the mistake, um, you know, like knocking on everyone's door. Like be patient, you know, work on yourself, work on your image, work on good promo pictures, good promo, like good gear, you know, like work on that and seek a mentor. Like this is what I never had and I, I wish I could have had, but, you know, back in the days we had no internet. Seek a mentor, seek someone who was successful, like go to someone who was in WWE or Japan or whatever and ask him for advice, like, and try, you know, that he follows you a little bit, you know, that's, I think, personally important because you can learn from their you know, mistakes and you can learn from their experience. So I think that's super important. Yeah, thank you for that, Jazzy. And I just want to say to, to maybe wrap things up here too, I like how you were very candid and open with your struggles and uh, mental health and issues regarding professional wrestling. And I know, I think we've been seeing more and more discussion about that recently um, with uh, various wrestlers talking more about it, especially after some more high profile suicides, unfortunately. Um, do you find that having more of a, of a stronger mental health has been helping you in professional wrestling and in... Um, um, you know what? I personally think to be a wrestler, you need to be some kind of sick <laughs> you know like no healthy human being would do wrestling you know like you, you need to have some issues whatever issues that are you know so i would say um like you know like right now i have to be a saleswoman and i hate my job i have to be honest but i have to pay my rent somehow right and i know that's not me and i'm so unhappy you know like and i feel really bad about it but i try to remind myself about you know wrestling and i try to remind myself how many great people out there i mean just understand like i have four people out there who have a tattoo of me like that's crazy right and you always think like you i don't make an impact but i guess i do <laughs> so and for everyone who feels like me right now going insane and i mean here in germany we cannot even go to the gym like it's not open and i, I feel like really bad and i gained a lot of weight and i'm not the same anymore but I mean, we don't know what the future will bring, but I love to say everything will get better and we need to adapt somehow. Um, for example, what we also had before, like I did serious sports entertainment, that's like my promotion. And of course now I cannot, I don't have matches or something I can promote, but um, so that I stay still connected with my fans, you know, I open like a promo tournament. So the wrestlers battle each other on the mic. So that's like something what I give to the fans and they really enjoy it. You know, like I have um, every week I put like a battle out there and then I have like judges who comment on it. And so the, the people who watch this can also learn. They understand, hey, what's important for cutting a promo, you know, and there's something I want to put out there. And um, yeah, I wish like sometimes I look at my favorite wrestler or whatever person I have inspiration for I look at their Instagram or social media and I see nothing and I'm really disappointed because I'm like do they not care about me as a fan or what's going on why can I not see anything from them you know and I wish that they don't forget that they're still needed you know we are as fans still looking at their social media so yeah we cannot see you live right now but we still love you you know and I hope that everybody understands who's struggling and I also want to offer um, if you are struggling with mental health and have any, I don't know, doubts or anything, you can contact me. Like, I am happily here to talk to you, you know, like, we need to support each other. That's wonderful, and I thank you for that, and I, I want to thank you for this entire keynote. I know I've, it's actually been very comforting to hear that 
someone like you has gone through so many struggles and you've you've reached the the success that you were hoping for and and i love hearing those types of stories so thank you for sharing that with us thank you i hope it was something like you expected <laughs> <laughs> it was more than i expected so thank you so much for that